A 45-year-old woman was referred for evaluation of purpuric punctate and tiny macules on the tongue. She gave a history of numerous episodes of unexplained mild to severe nasal bleeding. The family history was significant for recurrent epistaxis and telangiectatic lesions in her mother and two sisters. The most likely diagnosis is and the intraoral clinical picture is provided here where we can observe numerous purpuric tiny macules scattered on the dorsum of the tongue. So apart from that, two other informations we can obtain from the given question is there is episodes of nasal bleeding, that is epistaxis. The patient gives a history of epistaxis, nasal bleeding and a positive family history of similar episodes and the lesions seen in her mother and two sisters. Therefore. The positive family history denotes that the condition is hereditary. That is, it runs in families. Therefore, it is a very important key information that we can obtain from the given question. That is, there is episode of epistaxis that is seen, telangiectatic lesions that is appearing in the family also and the patient is also presenting with such telangiectatic lesions in her dorsum of the tongue. So, now let us look into the given options. They are Sturge Weber syndrome. Osler Weber Rendu syndrome, Crest syndrome, or any of the above. The first two options are the syndromes associated with hemangiomas, whereas the third option, Crest syndrome, is considered to be a variant of cutaneous systemic sclerosis. But the most common feature seen among all the three options are telangiectatic lesions occur in all the three conditions okay telangiectasias are common in all the three conditions but some of the basic or important characteristic findings of each condition help us to differentiate one from the other and also to come to the most probable diagnosis for this patient first let's focus on sturge weber syndrome it is also known as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis so the characteristic findings one can observe in sturge weber syndrome is there will be evidence of leptomeningeal angiomas. Leptomeningeal angiomas which will be seen in the cranial radiographs. Apart from that, there will be occurrence of port wine nevi. It is a very, very classic finding that the patients with Sturge Weber syndrome will have port wine nevi developed in few months after birth. Okay, so it is restricted mostly to the regions associated with trigeminal nerve and it occurs unilaterally. So, port wine nevi with leptomeningeal angiomas are the two important findings and the third one is it shows ocular involvement that is there exists glaucoma for the patient or exophthalmos and sometimes even angiomas of the choroid can also be observed angiomas of choroid. So, here because of these findings, these three important findings, it is also known as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. That is, there is angioma, there is trigeminal area, port wine, neva is seen. Encephalo denotes the neurological involvement. Therefore, the three important systems involved in case of Sturge Weber syndrome is the eye, is the CNS and the facial region where you can observe a port wine, neva. And one another important point here is that Sturge Weber syndrome is non-familial condition. It is not observed in family. It is non-hereditary. It does not run in families. Therefore, this one particular feature itself help us exclude Sturge Weber syndrome from the given options because it is non-familial. Next option is Osler Weber Rendu syndrome. So, here we have to notice that it is a triad. Osler Weber Rendu syndrome is a triad which consists of recurrent epistaxis and numerous telangiectatic lesions, that is, telangiectasia. Telangiectasia is nothing but there is small dilated capillaries which appears like a spider nevi, is known as telangiectasia. So, and the third feature is positive family history is seen. Therefore, Osler-Weber-Rendu syndrome is a triad characterized by recurrent epistaxis, telangiectasia and positive family history and all the three features are seen in the clinical case of our question also. So, therefore, Osler-Weber-Rendu syndrome is a familial one with a positive family history, there are episodes of bleeding such as epistaxis and telangiectatic lesions that is seen. Therefore, it typically matches with the 
clinical condition in our question. And coming on with the third option that is crest syndrome as I have mentioned it is considered to be a variant of cutaneous systemic sclerosis. Crest syndrome is an acronym which stands for calcinosis cutis where it is characterized by calcium deposition in the skin in the form of nodules and then comes Raynaud's phenomenon. Exposure to cold brings about various changes in the color because of vasospasm and then you will have esophageal dysfunction that is present, esophageal dysfunction and sclerodactyly, sclerodactyly is thickening of the fingers, digits will be seen and then T stands for telangiectatic lesions or telangiectasias. So therefore, telangiectasia which stands as T in the crest syndrome is a finding that matches with a clinical history but apart from that crest syndrome stands as one of the important differential diagnosis for osler weber rendu syndrome until and unless a proper history is obtained. Okay, so that is an important finding you have to know and crest syndrome can be differentiated from osler weber rendu syndrome based upon the autoimmune because crest syndrome is an autoimmune connective tissue disorder therefore crest syndrome will demonstrate an antibody known as anti-centromere autoantibody anti-centromere autoantibodies which is positive for crest syndrome and negative in case of osler weber rendu syndrome therefore among the given three options we can omit crest syndrome because it is an autoimmune conditions whereas no such relevant history is given in our case and osler weber rendu syndrome shows a triad on this three important clinical manifestations of the triad are also seen in our patient with the same family history, epistaxis and telangiectatic lesions and they also presented with such telangiectatic lesions in their tongue and with a positive family history. So therefore among the given three options, the most favorable diagnosis, the most likely diagnosis for the given condition is osler weber rendu syndrome. So getting on with the explanation, osler weber rendu syndrome is known by other names such as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia and then it is a hereditary one we have to know. It is a triad of telangiectasia, recurrent epistaxis and a positive family history and HHT type 1 is caused by mutation of endoglin gene present on chromosome number 9 and this is a clinical presentation. This is a similar clinical presentation where you can see multiple petechiae seen in the buccal mucosa and therefore we have to know or we can make a diagnosis of hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia based on the criteria that is the patient should show positive three findings out of the following four criteria and the criteria are recurrent spontaneous epistaxis which is seen in our patient. Telangiectasia of mucosa and skin, yes it is positive in our patient too and arteriovenous malformations involving the lungs, liver or CNS that is the systemic involvement is not observed in our case and a family history of hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, yes our patient also gives a positive family history therefore out of the four criteria, three criteria matches with the history given by the patient and therefore based upon the clinical findings and the history we can conclude that the most probable diagnosis of the clinical condition is osler weber rendu syndrome.